All right. Well, let's go in order here based on the board. Everybody loves a good board. Um, so we'll start with the coaches out. I know we touched on it briefly in, I believe, our last episode, but Matthias Omeda is out of San, uh, San Jose. And um, Hernan Lozada, Lozada is out for D.C., which was a pretty surprising move. I remember us um, reacting to the news when it first came out. Definitely one we thought was maybe on the chopping block at some point, but probably earlier than we expected. But seeing as how we kind of touched on Omeda a little bit, I want to hear your thoughts here. Um, when you saw the news for Losada, did you think it was too early or did you think this was on um, this was coming? We had talked about this in our individual group chat, but it took myself and it, it seems like everybody by complete surprise. We talked actually, and actually funny enough on our YouTube, um, our YouTube posting of last week's episode, um, we had a comment basically along the lines of right after the, uh, the episode went out and, and then Losada got let go. Um, something along the lines of like that, that, um, <laughs> that said that last segment didn't end well or didn't, didn't age well because we didn't talk about Losada being the next guy up at all. Never crossed our minds, never in a million years did we think that was the way it was going to be. And yet he was the next one gone. Um, in my personal opinion, and I had many Twitter conversations with a lot of our followers. It is unreal that he didn't get a chance to really get more than just one window in a few games. I know he had the window and he had a few people come in, but this feels very much like uh, Ziggy at, at Seattle. Like right before Ladero came in, he was taking this team at the bottom of the standings. Then Brian Schmetzer came in and Ladero saved them. First game after Lasada leaves, you've got Taxi Fontas, who comes in and lights it up. And it's like, oh, wow, look at this great team under this new manager. It's like, well, Lasada didn't even get the chance, you know? I think it's absolutely too soon, especially considering that he never got a chance to work with the signings that he had, right? That was a massive signing for them, but it had to wait. It'd be like firing Bob Bradley before he gets to work with Insigne, you know? It's at that level of crazy to me, personally. Well, let me let me ask you this. Is there an argument that this is the correct timing for them? Because DC was sitting bottom of the Eastern Conference when they decided to let him go. No, I don't think so, because let's look at the other teams that are at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the standings right now, right? Yeah. Well, one of them is the team that they just recently beat. So and you take it with a little bit of a grain of salt that, you know, maybe things aren't necessarily fixed and maybe they just played a poor team or a team in bad form, I should say. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the, the wind jumped them up a few spots. They do have a game at hand as well. They've only played seven so far and most have played eight. Um, so, you know, I, I would expect that, you know, if they got another win, this is how tight the Eastern Conference is right now. If DC got another win, they jump up to fourth, potentially, based on goal difference. But uh, actually, no, they would jump up the fourth uh, cleanly. Yeah. Which is wild. I mean, they even Colum I mean, even Columbus, it's three points separating 12th and fourth. So I, I kind of agree with you. I think I don't know how you can let go of someone that quickly unless there was something else that happened behind the scenes that we obviously don't know about. Maybe there was a, a falling out between ownership and, and Losada. But when the table's this close and you're only seven or eight games into the season and you're not going to give him – you're not even – like, I don't even know if this is – it's not even the quarter of the season yet. Oh, I, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know how you don't give him more time. I know he had last season, but – I mean, he almost brought that team to the playoffs last season, and I don't think that team was a playoff team. No, not at all. And, yeah, I mean, my heart just sank a little bit. I opened up the standings to take a look at kind of who, what other teams are there. Cincinnati's bat at the bottom. Yeah, they are. Their, their trip to the moon has been has been rerouted. <laughs> Back down to earth. <laughs> um, but listen, like New England right now, right? 
New England is sitting joint last with Cincinnati. Eight games into the season, seven points. Are we talking about are we talking about Bruce Arena being getting the can? No. I, mean, talking little, about, I think Bruce has earned a little bit more time. I mean, he just won the shield. Okay, fair. But I mean, we talk about it again, right? Like what I've read is that there were there were some missing gaps between the way he wanted to coach and the way that the players wanted to play. If that's the case, you have to give him the time to bring in the players who will match his system, right? That's the difference is he, he and, and again, I, I always point to the taxi uh, found us, right? That guy was going to be a game changer. Red Bull should have gotten him, by the way, but that's another story for another day. He was going to be a game changer for this club. A, a, he was going to be what they thought Eddie Flores was going to be. And they didn't even give him a shot to work with him. I think it's way too early. I think there were, but you know, we, we look back at this in five months and they're sitting fifth. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to question anything. Now, if they stay down at the bottom, you're going to start saying, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? So only time will tell it. It feels a little harsh. Again, I hope that whoever the new guy comes in plays taxi found us at left back plays Julian Grasso in goal and puts DC to the floor because that's just exactly what I want to see. But from a MLS neutral standpoint, Hernan Lozada should have been giving at least to mid season. Cause here, guess what? At the end of the day, I know this is going to spark a whole bunch of other things. Guess what happens if they finish bottom of the table? You just go again next year, right? What are, what are you really losing? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. There's no so, risk. You give him that's why Ben Olsen lasted that long, by the way. Yeah, Side exactly. Man. That and Benny Ball shall never die. But bring him back. Uh, <laughs> um, right. Like, I think it's unfair. Unless the coach, and, and we'll talk about Almeida, I'm sure, in a little bit, unless the coach has been given year after year after year to prove something and he just hasn't done it. I don't, I, I don't think this is a fair one. You've given him a year of you gave him like because he was fresh into the team last last year, right? That was his, his first game was his first game ever. He didn't join like midway through the year before. Yeah. So that's a, yeah. You gave him you gave him a you gave him a year with minimal transfer funds, let him let him sign a DP on a free who would only join like yesterday and not even give him time to work him into a system. That's awful. 15 months, 15 months is what I'm just, I'm reading here. I just think, I think it's way too early. I think it's, I think it's excessive, but again, you might see in five months, nobody questioning anything because they'll be okay. So, uh, good point that you mentioned up the 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 amount of time. Because on the flip side, the other coach that just got released, Matthias Almeida, a lot would say got way too much time. So, my question for you: What's the sweet spot? What's the right amount of time that you got to give a coach in order to really get a sense of if he's going to fit or not? This kind of goes back to okay. This goes back to the comment of how much money are you giving coaches to play with? Or are you expecting them to make miracles out of nothing? My judgment is based off of how much financial backing you give him. If you get, if you bring somebody in and they don't do it and you give them zero money and you expect them to just turn the team around with whatever investment you've made, I think it doesn't matter how long you give them. I think you're just setting them up for failure. If you're going to set a certain payroll for them, depending on where the payroll is, you need to give them at least half a year because so I go back to the Ben Bayer. Um, I think he calls it the Ben Bayer clause. You need six months in MLS to accumulate, uh, to acclimate before you can actually play. Bradley Wright Phillips is a great example. Bradley Wright Phillips came in in his first six months at the end of the year, scored two goals. He went on to score a hundred plus goals after that in five months five years, six years, right? 
everybody needs an acclimation point. So if you're going to give a guy X million dollars to make transfers or whatever, and then judge him on, on a game and a half of those new transfers playing, that's so out of line. So you, to me, I, I give them at least a year and a half because it'll give you half a year of acclimation and then a proper, proper year of playing. If it don't work, then it don't work, whatever. But that's my my sweet point's a year and a half with good financial backing. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. I think the the money factor probably should play, you know, obviously somewhat of a role, but I don't think that should be the the end all be all. Because I think uh, the way that the salary cap is structured, for the most part, things are somewhat even between teams. It's just like the designated player spot where that financial backing kind of makes the difference. But you can, you can of course, find designated players off for, for cheaper. Um, but yeah, I, I think year and a half is probably a good sweet spot. I, I think based on that criteria, you could say Losada didn't get enough time, and you could say that Almeida got too much time. So um, one of the things I will note and I'm, I'm reading this, uh, this article here. Um, he was an insane fitness freak, it seems like. During his tenure... Lasada you're talking about? Yes. Yeah. During his tenure, players had to weigh in twice a week and faced fines if they didn't meet a target weight set by the club. And uh, Julian Grassel on uh, Z Soccer Pod... That wasn't German either. I can never get that. I can no, never... I think I think you got it there. Was that better? That was good. Yeah, uh, no, I think that was good. Um, you know, he he mentioned this before that it was it was pushing the limit between as much as you can give and as much as you can give until you get hurt. Like that that he was on that boundary consistently, and and he said that you know he reaped the benefits of it, but a lot of people didn't didn't think that was a good way to do things. So. Again, that's where you draw that line between, okay, the coach wants to do something. You don't have the players who fit. How much money are you going to give him to kick these guys to the curb and get the players who are going to fit, right? And I don't think he got enough time for it. It seems like that system of, like, <clears throat> turn these guys into the most athletic players in the entire league just doesn't work because that's that's the same issue that Heinz had with Atlanta is he was just working them constant, like, overworking them like, I think there were issues with, like, him not giving, like, water breaks either. I mean, it was insane with his stuff, but it just doesn't seem like that works. That shouldn't be the system that, like, it, it doesn't seem to be, like, a system that coaches can implement in this league. I think you need to find a balance. Because I think I think it's fair to say that you could overwork them and get injuries. Like, I don't know if the injuries that Atlanta are going through now are a result of – are like still like lingering results of Heinz's practice schedule or like workload that he was putting on the team. You also have this, this side note, right? He lost Paul Ariola and Kevin Paredes in like the last couple weeks of the transfer window. Never got a chance to replace them. So that right there is also a massive issue, right? You have to expect that if you're going to sell things for profit, you're going to take a hit unless you've got somebody already ready to go, which they didn't. And that's not on him. That's on the club system. But Yeah. Yeah. I think we can, we can just chalk this one up to a, uh, it's just, it's just not a good move. Honestly, I think that's kind of both where we're landed on this one. I, it's just too early to have uh, let him go. I, he needed some more time. I, I think things were, things at points started to look like they were falling into place for them. So. I think it was, this was harsh. I agree. Speaking of harsh, is it harsh to say that MLS teams don't care about the U.S. Open Cup? We're not talking about Almeida? We kind of talked about him before. I don't know if you had anything else to add on him. No, one of the things I did want to ask, though, is, is I find it very interesting that um, both teams – delivered comeback wins in their first week without their old manager. I was going to see, I wanted to get your take on that. 
it seems like a lot of the times when a coach who's kind of, I don't want to, I guess maybe lost the locker room when they're first relieved of their duties, it almost seems like there's like an extra sense of motivation for a lot of players that first game after. Yep. Maybe that's, you know, maybe that's part of the, uh, the doing for the comeback victory. Maybe it's just coincidence, but you know, I've seen this happen in, in even non MLS teams in Europe, you know, if, if a guy has lost the locker room and then he gets relieved, there's like a little bit of extra motivation, especially if you're in the interim period where you don't really know like who's coming in as the new coach. Well, let me, let me get into a good run of form. Now I can make a, a case for myself to be in favor with whoever comes in to be the new coach or even the interim coach. So it's almost like a fresh start for a bunch of these players who may have been struggling because it's likely that you're not releasing a coach if you're top of the league, you know? So I think it's partially coincidence, but I think also, also partially extra motivation. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, no, excuse me. Um, no, I agree. Right. It's, uh, you always have that little bit of bounce, right? You've got, okay. Fresh start past is gone. New system. I, I, I think a lot of them just come in and are just like, okay, go play. Don't worry about tactics. Just go play. And then it goes, it goes back to being fun again. Right. So I find it really interesting that that stuff happens a lot. And, um, you know, they, they're, they're just, they're just doing what they know what to do or know how to do, excuse me. And, uh, I, 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 that is the other part of this whole, was it too early to get rid of Losada? Because there are times where, okay, now you need to make that change because you know, that's, that effect is probably going to happen, but how, how long do you want to wait or how long can you wait until a playoff push, right? We're eight games into the season. You could have waited longer before you get a playoff push, but you know, you, you got to balance that out. So I, uh, I just, I always found that interesting. I just want to get your opinion on it. That's all.